we opted for a large car, a car that was going to compete head on with the likes of Holden and Ford in size, but also in capacity of engine. And at the time of launch, the 3.8 litre engine, coupled with the exchange rates, coupled with the oil crisis, meant that we were up against it. The decision to make a new platform or to change a platform of a vehicle is made so far ahead of the actual sales date that you've got a, a three year pregnancy. So you make your decision, but no one's got a crystal ball that can see three years out. So the decision with 380, a lot of people saying, well, why did you build a big car? Um, if you look at when the designing and decision phase was made, which was in um, late 2002, early 2003, it, they were all the right decisions. You look at a nation the size of Australia, approximately 21 million people, we've got four vehicle manufacturers all making a similar product. And each one of the manufacturers are currently in that situation. We're all still making that large family car that the market is telling us that they don't particularly want. So it's what's actually happening in the world. I mean, the trend away from a large family car uh, to sports utility vehicles and off-roaders and, and, and the smaller car. I think it's just the wrong timing for the wrong car. That's all, you know, the, for the petrol price go up and we just released a 380 and I think it's just the wrong timing. Business is a business, you know, you can't sell the cars, that means you've got to find something else, you know, so otherwise they can't keep losing money all the time. We had plans that were laid in place for the 380 launch. Uh, a particular part of that was an export vehicle, which is the reason why we got our brand new press line. Um, but as soon as the parent company got into a bit of trouble, they canned the export, which made it very, very difficult, didn't give us, didn't give us the volumes that we needed. The whole market, the international market, is just changing dramatically. There are only four growth markets, China, India, Russia and probably Africa. The rest are all saturated. So uh, unless you come up with a real appealing type of car uh, that's going to sell, and you've got some export markets, um, and at least realising volumes of uh, 40, 50, 60,000, it is going to be bloody difficult for many, many uh, manufacturers. That includes GM and Ford. Manufacturing has had to take a huge swing and directional change to maintain our standing as Australians in, in the world economy. And we are just a cog in the great wheel of, uh, of Mitsubishi globally. We are part of that. I mean, it's not, you can't deny that side of things. All of the things that were stacked up against us, um, very difficult for us to control. So it's a hard thing to accept when you've done your best and your best for whatever reason. It's not that it's not good enough, but your best in the climate isn't good enough. It's a team effort when you're working all together, building a vehicle. It goes through several stages and people help out each other and I was proud to stay here, I was proud of my job. It's just hard to actually walk out this door on Monday. <laughs> <laughs>